In this lesson, we're going to continue to discuss paragraph formatting. If you'd like to follow along, go under the File menu to Open, and in the Sample Files folder, scroll down to 0706, Making Type Span Columns, and just click OK. There was a new feature introduced in CS5 that solved a long-standing problem. For any document that had a headline spanning across columns of text, it used to be very difficult to make the distance between a headline and the columns of text that were under it consistently the same on each and every page of a document, like a brochure or a newsletter. Let me zoom in with my zoom tool. I'm just going to click and drag across the width. Of my page. Because there was no feature that automatically made a line of text span across columns, people developed all kinds of workarounds to try to make the space between a headline and columns of text under it consistent on each and every page. I'm going to show you one of those workarounds. I'm going to click on my headline frame with my selection tool and then Double click on the center bottom bounding box point. That closes up the frame to the baseline of the last line of text. Now I'm going to go to my horizontal ruler and just click and drag out a ruler guide, making it snap to the bottom of my headline frame. And I'm going to drag out a second guide that I'm going to drag to the top of the frame that contains the three columns of text and let go. Now I'm going to go to my graphic frame and just click and drag from the top guide to the bottom guide and it should snap to both of those guides. The little rectangle that I created, I would use this as a measuring device to make the headline on each and every page the same distance from the columns of text under it on every single page. Well, it is a workaround and it did work, but at best it was a very primitive approach. Let me show you what changed in CS5. I'm going to scroll down to the next page. And on this page, you can see that I have the headline in the same frame as the three columns of text. I'm going to double click with my selection tool on the headline and I have an insert point. And now, if I go under the Options menu of my Paragraph panel, I'm going to choose Span Columns. By default, it says for Paragraph Layout, Single Column, and everything else is grayed out. But watch what happens when I go to Span Columns. Because I have Preview checked, let me uncheck it, it's actually showing me what it's going to look like, and that's exactly what I want. Some other choices under the Span Columns pop-up. I could choose just two columns. And you can see now my headline is spanning the first two columns. There's also a choice of three or four or five for frames that have more columns. I'm going to choose all. Well, how does this solve the spacing issue after the headline and before the three columns of text start? Well, there is a space before span. So if I had text above this, I could choose how much that space was. There is also a space after span. And watch what happens when I click the up arrow. At a certain point, when the spacing becomes more than what is currently there by default, the three columns of text are going to move slightly down away from the baseline of the headline. That's exactly what I want it to look like. I'm just going to click OK. Well, what's so terrific about this? Well, span columns is paragraph formatting, which means I can save it as a paragraph style for all of my headlines. That way, I'm assured that not only do all of my headlines look alike, they also will have the same amount of space after the span. So the three columns of text are always going to be exactly the same distance away from the baseline of the headline on every single page. Let me scroll down a little bit. There's another feature I wanted to talk about. 
which is part of the span columns feature set. I'm going to select my numbered list and I'm going to go under the options menu of the paragraph panel and go back to span columns. This time for page layout, instead of single column or span columns, I'm going to choose split column. And you can see what it does. It's actually splitting up that column into two narrower subcolumns. So that solves the problem. Let me uncheck preview of having a very narrow list of bullets or numbers with a big hole to its right. Let me hit preview again and continue going through the span columns dialog window. You also have space before a split. So if I were to click my up arrow, it's going to add space above my split column. Not really what I want, so I'm going to go back down to zero. But I can also add space after the split. So let me click my up arrow and I'm going to leave it this way with just a little bit more space after the split than before. There's also an inside gutter. What is that about? Well, it's the space between the two sub columns. So if I were to increase the gutter, you can see that it's moving the two columns further and further apart. That looks pretty good. There's also an outside gutter. Not something I really want to use here, but let me show you what it does. It will move the two sub columns in from the outside edges of the column. So I'm going to click the up arrow and you can see that it's moving the two sub columns in further away from the edges of the two columns. I'm going to go back down to zero for outside gutter and just click OK. And once again, what is really terrific about this, because it is paragraph formatting, I can save it as a paragraph style to use again and again in my publication. We're going to continue to discuss paragraph formatting in the next lesson.